somebody help me say that he did be in Christ
Just a little bit. Good. Yes, Lord. Lord, we bless you. Yes, Lord, we exalt you. Yes, Lord, we give glory and honor and praise. Lord, we celebrate in your presence today. Lord, how awesome you are today. How mighty you are today, Lord. How extraordinary you are, Lord. You're worthy of honor. You are glorious, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just magnify you today. Lord, we worship you and praise you. Lord, we lift up to you adoration and exaltation. For there's no one like unto you. You are the most high God. You are the great I am today. And we here today to celebrate your glorious presence in this place today. Oh, we honor you here today. Would you join hands one with another here? I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I bless the one whose hand I hold. May a fresh anointing and power of God's Holy Spirit rest upon you. May there be an anointing of God to be in the center of His will all the days of your life. May you hear His voice. May you be led by His Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, may every member of your family honor and serve God. May they be in the center of His will. May they fulfill His plan. I bless your home. May there be peace. May there be unity. May there be love and one accordness. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless you today. In Jesus' name. Be strong, be healthy, be whole, be well, be full of energy, vitality, stamina, and endurance in Jesus' name for the glory of God. Now stretch your hands out towards our city. Father.
In Jesus' mighty name, we bless the city of Louisville. Now, Lord, today I want to thank you that as we are assembled in one accord, Lord, there's an anointing. There's a power that we're being released to throughout this city. And today we speak to principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. You foul powers that would try to cause destruction and devastation and turmoil in our city. We rebuke you. We bind you. And we cancel your power and your assignment in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we speak to those that are bound and oppressed and tormented to be liberated, set free right now in Jesus mighty name Lord we speak to the leaders of our city we speak to our mayor Greg Fisher we speak to those that serve on the city council we speak to you to be men and women of integrity and honesty in Jesus mighty name Lord we declare the blessings of God over this city we speak Lord our city shall prosper Lord new corporations shall be relocated here in Jesus mighty name we declare an open heaven over over this city and the blessings of God to be upon it. Now, Lord, today we bless our nation. And, Lord, today we cry out for America. And we pray today, Father God, that there would be a mighty, sovereign move of your Spirit that would blanket America. We pray the convicting powers of the Holy Spirit would fall upon our land, that people would begin to turn to you. They would begin to weep and lament and mourn and cry out for mercy upon this nation. Lord, I pray for our leaders. Lord, I pray the fear of God would come upon them. I bind foolishness and nonsense off of them. I rebuke that foul spirit of the enemy. I pray, God, get a hold of our leaders, God. Get their attention. God, raise up men and women who will stand for righteousness and honesty and godliness in Jesus' name for the glory of God. Now, Lord, we bless Israel. Hold your right hand up, Father, in Jesus' name. We begin to bless the nation of Israel. And Lord, we pray that all of Israel shall be saved. Lord, may hearts be open, blinders be removed. Lord, may there be a sweeping, mighty move of your spirit. Lord, we speak protection over Israel. Lord, I declare you're the keeper of Israel. I declare your angels are standing guard and watching over her. And Lord, I loose favor upon Israel. I declare the favor of God upon Israel that you would cause nations and leaders let's stand up lord in support of israel in jesus name i declare america shall be a friend of israel lord i declare in jesus mighty name great blessings upon this nation in jesus name now lift your both hands to the lord and i want you to pray this prayer with me say father in jesus name i receive an anointing a mighty anointing to be a soul winner to be an ambassador to be a witness for you. May an anointing of the Holy Ghost be mighty upon me to be fruitful in your kingdom. Give me words in season to those who are weary. May I speak as your oracle in Jesus' mighty name. And may 2015 be my greatest soul winning year ever in Jesus' name. I want you to prophesy right now the finances coming in. I want you to prophesy. Make that declaration. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I declare an anointing of Deuteronomy 8.18 to be upon your people. That God's releasing, God's imparting an anointing upon you to create wealth in Jesus' mighty name. God's giving you ideas, concepts. God's giving you wisdom and knowledge. He's sending angels that are going to speak into your life. God's setting you up for the greatest breakthroughs, the greatest miracles financially that you've ever had. I lose God's favor upon you that people bless you, help you, and give to you. I declare that God's increasing you more and more and even you and your children. I declare you're the head and not the tail. You're above and you're not beneath. You're going to lend and you're not going to borrow. You're not going under. You're going over for the glory of God. We bind debt. We bind lack. We bind insufficiency. Get out in Jesus' mighty name. I loose an open heaven over you, and you will flourish like a palm tree all the days of your life. Come on, celebrate. Come on, celebrate a little bit. Do you believe God's doing it? Come on. Come on, bless the Lord today.
say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, you act like you're blessed this morning. Amen. It's because you are. Turn around. Shake hands with somebody. Tell them you're blessed in the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Ushers, at this time, please come and begin to pass out the communion. God bless you, Pastor Chad, as you come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you sense the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit here today? It's mighty, 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 mighty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I know it's a little unorthodox, but if you don't have your communion yet, turn next to somebody and give them a high five and tell them the presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Can we sing this old song? Oh, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, Why? Let's sing that again. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus. Somebody sing, oh, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Sing, I'm thankful for the blood. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Come on, put a little soul in it. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for the blood. Of Jesus. Wash as white as snow. White as snow. What an honor that we have today to partake of the communion together. It's a time this morning not only to remember the Lord's sacrifice, but the reason for his sacrifice. The reason for his sacrifice, dear people of God, was you and me. The purpose for the sacrifice was that God wanted to buy his family back, put them in proper relationship with him. The sacrifice of Jesus shed blood was to cover or to atone for the sins that rightfully belong to us. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 it says, without the shedding of blood there is not the remission or the pushing back or the driving away or the forgiveness of sins. And we see this principle all the way in scripture, all the way back to the very beginning in that first garden when the first man and woman sinned against the Lord. It was God himself that shed blood to atone for their sins when he killed an animal and placed its freshly slain, blood-soaked skin upon their nakedness. It set the precedent for the blood that would cover. Somebody say the blood. We see it again in ancient Egypt when God would soon visit the land with a plague. Many plagues came. And when he was about to visit Egypt with one final plague that would take the lives of their firstborn sons, God told Israel to take a spotless lamb and apply its blood to the doorposts and the lintels of their dwellings. God was about to send a death angel throughout Egypt to teach them a lesson in the wages of sin. But he told Israel something glorious. I love to think about it. It was recorded in Exodus 12 and 13 that God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Oh, that's enough to make a Baptist want to shout right there. The death angel was going to pass over their homes, over their families, and they would be protected. Judgment that was coming would not come to them. Oh, hallelujah. Once again, it became true when God would take one final spotless lamb one final spotless lamb his name was Jesus what was his name Jesus. say that name again Jesus. and Hebrews 10 said that that sacrifice the final sacrifice 
of Jesus was the spotless lamb slain once and for all. And if we'll apply his blood to the doorposts of our heart, then once again, God would say to us, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. How many of you want the angel of death and judgment to pass over you? And when the death angel looks at you, not to see the sins you've committed, but rather to see the blood of the spotless lamb of God that covers and makes an atonement for your sin. How many of you want when the enemy looks at you, he doesn't see you, he sees the blood of Jesus, the king of glory, hallelujah. Let's apply the blood right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. It was once and it was for all. We thank you and we receive it. We apply your blood to our heart. The enemy shall not come nigh this dwelling. A thousand will fall all around us, 10,000 at our right hand. But when you see the blood, you're going to pass over us, and bring us blessing in its place. In Jesus' name, let us receive of the body together. Wash us clean with your blood today. Let's receive of the blood. Amen. Join Pastors Bob and Margaret Rogers on a trip of a lifetime to the Holy Land this summer. This trip will change your life as the Bible comes alive like never before. Walk in the footsteps of Jesus and see the holiest sights on earth where Jesus died and rose again. Plus, be baptized in the Jordan River. Space is limited on this all-inclusive trip to the land of the Bible, July 20th through August 1st, 2015. Call now for more information or visit bobrogersministries.org for detailed information on how you can visit the Holy Land. He's the one that does the clothing. Just thank God we've got a pastor who prays the Lord. If I'm an overachiever, I begin to run with the fun. Gave the war of God. Any time. And be a man of God. And they would just oh, I just want you set free. Christ from the dead lives no. in and this preacher told you the truth. I would suggest align yourself with CGIA and let's go forth and take our communities for Christ. The Bible says if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, a seed grows. Faith has to proclaim. Faith has to declare. Faith has to speak it. And faith that does not talk is not faith. Have you ever wanted to know how much faith you need? Or how much faith does God require from you? Dr. Rogers' new teaching, How Much Faith Do You Need on CD, is available now. Call 1-888-613-6080 and ask for the CD teaching, How Much Faith Do You Need? Order number HMF15 or visit bobrogersministries.org for ordering information. You stand with me, please, everyone standing. If you have your Bible, hold your Bible to the Lord. If you don't, hold your cigarettes high to the Lord. Hold your hand up high to the Lord. Uh, but I want everyone to stand and participate and declare this with me out loud. Say, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's all in this book. And as I speak the Word and thank the Word and act the Word, it opens the door for miracles. Today I shall hear the word of God. And faith shall rise in my spirit. In Jesus' name. As you remain standing, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 11. If you don't have a Bible, there's someone next to you who does. And you can uh, read with them the words of God. Mark 11:22. Would you say that please? Mark 11:22. In Mark 11, chapter 22, it says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, 
that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Father, anoint your word with great power in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. And Jesus and his disciples were, were walking, and they saw a fig tree. The fig tree had leaves, but when they got there, there was no fruit. So Jesus cursed it. He cursed that fig tree. He said, never again will people eat from this tree. So the next day, when they were walking, Peter said, Jesus, there's that fig tree that you cursed. And Jesus said this, says, have the God kind of faith. That's really what that means, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that whatsoever things he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Then he applies it to prayer. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And so he begins to tell the ingredients of having the God kind of faith. When we talk about the God kind of faith, we're talking about the faith that spoke this world into creation. We're talking about the faith that called those things that were not as though they were and that spoke the word and trees were formed, spoke the word and animals began to exist. We're talking about that same kind of faith is inside of us. And so when you pray, you just don't pray and then you say, well, I don't know if God heard that prayer. You pray and you believe in your heart and you believe in your mouth. And when we talk about the God kind of faith, it's not just believing in your heart, but it's speaking it out loud. And faith that does not talk is not faith. Faith has to proclaim. Faith has to declare. Faith has to speak it in the name of the Lord. Well, pastor, the Bible says if you just have a little bit of faith, that's enough. The Bible does not say if you have a little bit of faith, that's enough. The Bible says if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, a seed grows. And if a seed doesn't grow, it's not a seed. And there are some things in your life that takes big faith. And so you have to water that seed of faith and it begins to grow and it begins to grow until nothing is impossible in your life. Now we have concluded 21 days of fasting and prayer. And when you fast for 21 days, it's a purification of your faith. Your faith begins to be, be uh, purified. The Bible says that uh, uh, you'll say unto this mountain, be removed to yonder place, it shall be removed. Nothing shall be impossible to you. Howbeit, this kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. Well, how does fasting purify your faith? Well, with the same instrument that you speak, your tongue, your tongue is an extension of your stomach. And as people begin to fast, it absolutely affects the very the very instrument, your tongue, that you speak. Years ago, I was reading in the book of Joshua how they fasted for seven days as they marched around the city of Jericho. The people were so negative. The people did not believe that God would deliver them. So this is where duct tape was invented, I believe, and they were not allowed to speak and for seven days, this first six, they marched around and uh, they did not speak. On the seventh day, they marched seven times around the city of Jericho. They blew their trumpets and the Bible says they shouted with a great shout and the walls fell down flat. 
I remember I read that and I decided to go on a fast of not talking. So I told Margaret I was going to, I'm not, I'm not going to talk. And anytime I wanted to communicate with her, I wrote her a note. And so she wrote me back a note. Then I wrote her back. I said, no, you can talk. It's me that's not talking. <laughs> but it just didn't work. And so I decided that I was going to go and be by myself. And I went to a cabin at the lake and I just stayed there. And then when it came the time that I was to talk, I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't even have a dog to talk to. And, but I wanted to talk. And so I opened my mouth, and all that could come out is, that, Lord, I praise you. I hallow your name. I worship your name. But it was such a transformation of the way I spoke and the strength and the power and faith that began to come out of me happened as I did that. And right now, at the conclusion of this fast, you are poised for the greatest miracles and the greatest breakthroughs that you've ever had in your entire life. And I don't want you to mess it up. Hallelujah. Now, let me just share what I mean. When you read the Bible, the greatest miracles took place at the end of a fast. Daniel, he fasted 21 days and Gabriel comes to him and he shows him of things to come. He shows him of things that will happen even to the very year that Jesus was birthed. When Elijah, during a time of fasting, God provided supernatural provision where the, the cruise of oil, it never went dry, where the grain barrel never ran out of food, it was through a fast. It was a time of fasting where Jesus came out of the wilderness and he proclaimed the spirit of the Lord's upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. It was the miracle of fasting that helped usher in the miracle of multiplication. Jesus changed the, the multiplied the loaves and the fishes and he said, I'll not send you away fasting. Cornelius, while he's on a three-day fast, Gabriel comes to him sends him supernaturally, gives him a name, Peter. He goes to where he's staying in Joppa. Peter comes, and there's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that took place as a result of fasting upon the Gentiles. It was Barnabas and Paul who were fasting, and the Holy Ghost said, separate me, these men, for the work I've called them to do. And they went out and they established the churches, the missionary churches all through Asia were a result of fasting and prayer. And God is going to bring great supernatural miracles in your life because you fasted and prayed. Can I hear an amen? amen. The first time our church really began to fast, we, uh, I'd fasted for 21 days and then we began to have the church to join us in fasting the first uh, three days of the month. And then we would have a miracle service. And I remember our first miracle service was out at uh, the uh, uh, Prayer Mountain. That was a property we uh, owned previously. And the place was packed. People were standing out on the porch, couldn't even get into the meeting room. And then there was a man who was healed of cancer, hadn't been able to eat in eight days had been sent home to die. And as uh, after prayer, he told his wife, I'm so hungry, I, we need to leave now. And he went home and he ate and slept, ate and slept, went back to work. God healed him of cancer. There was a lady who had come from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Shepherdsville. She had a growth on her leg that was as big as a grapefruit. And uh, after prayer, she went back home. Her neighbor, she was explaining she had had prayer in that miracle service, and she reached down to point to where that tumor was that actually protruded from her slacks. And when she pointed there, it was no longer there. She drove back up to Prayer Mountain. She came to where I was, and there was an indentation in the calf area, like it had been removed surgically and cut out. God did that. There were 32 people healed in our church of terminal cancer that year. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big praise clap. 
Margaret and I were pastoring in Lexington, and the Lord spoke to us to come here to Louisville. We came, and I began to work for my dad, and a TV station opened up, Channel 21. We emptied our pockets on a table in a board meeting. We had $63 as all we had, and uh, the company that we were challenging us on buying this station had $100 million in a line of credit. There was a knock on the door in that meeting, opened the door, and there was Margaret. Margaret had been ruthlessly beaten. A man beat her and drug her by her hair and tried to, uh, tried to, to harm her and to rape her, and, to, to, and God delivered her. But she was beat up. And I said, Margaret, this is an attack upon not just you, but it's on me and on what God's called us to do. And God enabled us. We uh, went forth in believing that God would give us that station. And then while we were fasting, on the 18th day of a fast, we got a call from our attorneys that the station had been granted unto us in the name of the Lord. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big praise clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the God kind of faith speaks. And many of you have fasted and prayed, but now the enemy has come against you. And the enemy always comes against a person at the end of a fast. The enemy came against Jesus. The Bible says after he had fasted for 40 days, the devil came to him and he was tempted greatly. He was tempted in every aspect that we could be tempted as human beings. Only he wasn't facing some junior just uh, devil who just graduated from temptation school. He faced Satan himself. And he was tempted in the greatest measure any human being has ever been tempted. But he overcame that temptation. And anything the devil says to you is a lie. Anything the devil says he's going to do to you is a lie. And God will do the opposite. But if you don't stand up and proclaim, devil, you're a liar. No, I'm not going to go broke. No, we're not going to get a divorce. No, I'm not going to die with cancer. If you don't stand and begin to speak it out of your mouth, you'll lose your blessing in the name of the Lord. Faith has two sides to that coin. There's the believing in your heart, but there is the confession with your mouth. What saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Can it be a word if it's not spoken? The word of faith which we preach. For without will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah to the Lord. Now, the word of faith, the word of faith is a spoken word. And the word of faith is so powerful. It can overcome sickness. It can overcome addictions. It can overcome sin. The Bible says that God has given to every man the measure of faith. Raise your right hand. Say, I love that scripture. I Say, I have a measure of faith. Amen. Now, this applies even to the sinners. If you come here today, you're away from God. The very words that I proclaim to you have supernatural power to enable you to believe God that you may be saved. It's not from man. It comes supernaturally from God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And so faith begins to come. And if you will believe in your heart that God will save you, You'll declare it, Lord Jesus, come into my life, change my life, take out of me what the devil's put in me. The Bible says you shall be saved. Hallelujah. The Bible says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that's written therein. For then I'll make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This book of the law shall not depart out of your what? Mouth. Your mouth. It means you have to speak it in the name of the Lord. 
Now the same way you get saved, the same way you get set free from demons and devils, the same way that God delivers you from cigarettes and from addictions in your life is the same way God heals you. You believe in your heart and you declare it with your mouth. You declare it with your mouth when the pain is still there, when the back it still bothers you. You proclaim God's going to prosper you when the bill collectors are calling you. God's turning things around. God's blessing me. Ring, ring, ring. The bill collector's on the phone. Well, hallelujah to the Lord. I'm here to say God knows how to turn it around. Your faith's strong today. You are poised for a great miracle in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I, I sense the power of the Holy Spirit that's able to break every attack off your life. Years ago, Dr. Cho, the pastor is, by the way, the largest church in the world, was dying with tuberculosis. He uh, lived in uh, Korea. It was right after the Korean War. Poverty was very rampant. He was sent home to die. He was 17, and a, a classmate gave him a Bible. For the first time in his life, he began to read the miracles of Jesus. He was Buddhist. And he said, Lord, if you heal these people in the Bible, if you'll heal me, I'll serve you. And God healed him of tuberculosis. So he went to his dad and said, Dad, I've accepted Jesus. And Jesus has healed me of tuberculosis. And his dad became so angry. He said, I wish you would have died. And he threw him out of the house. He had no place to go. And so he went to the pastor of the girl who had given him the Bible. He let him stay there for a while, and there was a Bible school, and they allowed him to attend this Bible school even without a high school education. He could speak a little pidgin English. Missionaries would come to preach, and they would send Cho, and Cho would, would interpret for these preachers. And as he interpreted, faith began to rise within him. And then the opportunity came when he graduated from Bible school to start his own church. He went to the slums of Seoul, Korea, the poorest part. He took the tarpaulins that had been discarded by the United States Marine Corps, and they stretched a church, a tent church. His room was right off the platform. Just a small room, but that's where he slept, that's where he lived. And on one Wednesday afternoon as he's preparing to preach, he came to the passage that I read to you. Have the God kind of faith. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and not doubt in his heart, but believe that whatsoever things he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He was writing his sermon. His sermon and his, uh, was being written on the margins of newspapers. He had no paper. The pencil he was using was just a nub that he chewed down to the wood to write. His desk was a orange crate as he sat literally on the floor. And he said, Father, he said, I need a desk. I want a desk, but not just any kind of desk. I want a mahogany desk. A desk with a beautiful chair and the drawers filled with pencils and paper. And then he said, and Father, while I'm praying, I also need a bicycle. I don't have a bicycle, and I, I don't want just a Korean bicycle. I want a bicycle made in the USA. Well, that night he got up and he read his text. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And in the middle of his sermon, he said, I just want to thank God that God has given me a bicycle this week. Well, everybody applauded. And at the conclusion, some of the young men came up. Oh, Brother Cho said, can I ride your bicycle? And he said, um, yes, you can ride my bicycle as soon as it arrives. So what do you mean as soon as it arrives? Well, I've got it by faith. Well, they just laughed at him. They mocked him. And so that week, 
he got a call from the Bible school, and there was an American colonel. His wife had called, and they were trying to get some of the students from the Bible school to come over and help them load up. They had been uh, repositioned. They were moving back to America, and they needed to load the furniture into these containers, and Cho went over. He came into the study, and he looked, and there was a desk. Oh, guess what kind it was? Mahogany. Mahogany. He sat on that chair. He put his hands on that desk. He opened the drawers. They were full of paper and pencils. He said, Lord, this is my desk. Don't let, don't let them take it back to America. This desk belongs to me. In a little bit, the colonel's wife, she said to her husband, Honey, that desk is so big, we'll never be able to get it in one of those containers. Why don't we give it to this young Korean preacher? So they gave him that desk. Hallelujah. So the next day, he was back over helping, and he looked out back, and there was a bicycle. He went over and looked at that bicycle, and it said, Made in the USA. So in a little bit, uh, he, he proclaimed that bicycle was his, and the, he heard the colonel's wife talking. Honey, that, that young preacher doesn't have a, a bicycle. He doesn't have any transportation. Why don't you give him that bicycle? No, I gave him that desk, and I'm not going to give him my bicycle. But you know, those containers were so packed, jammed, they couldn't get a bicycle in there, and he rode home on his bicycle. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Oh, I read that story years ago, and I said, Lord, if you did that for Cho, you can do it for me. And I was trying to get an airplane, and uh, I preached on that, that uh, topic. I preached on that that uh, passage, and I, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And, and I said, I just want to thank God that God gave me an airplane this week. Well, there was a man in our church. He's a, he was a deacon. He said, well, Pastor Bob, I've always wanted to fly in an airplane. Would you take me flying in your airplane? And I said, well, it, it hadn't arrived yet. It's a faith airplane. He laughed. He laughed at me just like those fellows laughed at Cho. But you know, the next morning I got up and I said, Lord, you know, I don't like people laughing at my faith. And I, I looked in the paper and I saw an airplane for sale. And I called and they wanted to sell it. And I said, well, I want to buy it. And it worked it out. And by the end of that week, I had an airplane. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. I told that deacon, I said, come on, I'm going to, take you flying. That's the last time he ever wanted to fly uh, in a little plane with me. Hallelujah. But I'm here to say that God is a God of miracles, and right now, you're poised to get your miracle. Hallelujah. You've got to believe it in your heart. Write, write it down and begin to declare it. Begin to declare God is going to help you to get out of debt. God's going to save your family. God's healing you in the name of Jesus. This week I was reading in the book of Luke and I was reading in the fifth chapter where a great multitude came and Jesus had no place to preach. And he saw Peter and he said, Peter, would you loan me your boat? And he preached from his boat. And after it was over, he said to Peter, have you caught any fish? He said, we fished all night and didn't catch any fish. He says, well, cast your nets, plural, on the other side of the boat. Now, I want to interpolate a little bit what Peter's reply was. He said, Jesus, you might have been, a, you might be a good preacher, but I'm a good fisherman. And this is not the hours that you fish. The Sea of Galilee is so crystal clear that you actually can see down into the depths of the water. And so the fishing has to be done early in the morning or in the evening where the sun does not penetrate the water because the fish can see the nets. But he said, nevertheless, at thy word, and he cast his net, singular. The Bible says that they caught so many fish that the net broke. And then he called for another boat, and they were able to bring the fish into one boat 
And then they brought it into the second boat until both boats began to sink. Both boats began to sink. They caught so many fish. Well, that, that really got my attention. And I got on the internet and I began to, to determine how long a fishing boat was in the times of Christ. What would be the strength and how many poundage could be put in a boat to make it sink. And if a fish weighed approximately five pounds, about 600 fish in each one of those boats would reach the maximum weight. Now, then I looked up the average cost of a commercial fish. If you're in Alaska... Some of those fish that they catch, they sell them for $23 a pound. In the northern Atlantic, a codfish sells for $13 to a distributor. If you use the $13 figure, you're talking about each boat producing $39,000 in value or $78,000 in a, a take on those fish that Jesus proclaimed. That's pretty good uh, pay for letting them use a boat for a couple of hours. Can I hear an amen? And then the Bible goes on to say that it's astonished everyone. It says they were so astonished. And then Jesus said, if you'll follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. In other words, what you saw take place that's never happened before in catching so many fish is just a drop in the bucket on how many men you're going to catch for the kingdom of God. I tell you, when I read that, faith began to rise up within me. I began to proclaim, Father, this is a year that I'm getting out of debt. This is a year that miracles are happening. More people shall be saved. More people shall be delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. This is a year of miracles and breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare to you today, at the conclusion of this fast, you are positioned for mighty breakthroughs. If you have been fasting and praying for breakthroughs in your family, I want you to stand up right now. Stand up all over this auditorium. Maybe for a son, a daughter, a family member. I want you to stand up. I want you to come right down to the front. I want to pray for you. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle it needs to be spoken. If you're here and you've been fasting and praying for a healing, maybe it's in your own body or a member of your family, I want you to come and join these two. Gather just as close as you can so there'll be plenty of room for others. If you're here and you've been proclaiming for a financial breakthrough, it may be to start a business. It may be for the finances needed to carry on what you're desiring to do. I want you to come and join these that are here in Jesus' name. I tell you, God's got plenty of money. God's not broke in the name of the Lord. God knows how to open the right doors and he knows how to close the wrong doors in the name of Jesus. Your miracle, where is it? Your miracle's in your mouth. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says, the, the, the words that I've spoken to you are not hidden from you neither are they afar off. But the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, in thine heart, the words that you speak. Jesus read that and he quotes more scriptures from the book of Deuteronomy than any other book in the Old Testament. And he declared that we are to proclaim and speak the word of God. The, 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 it says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And in thine heart, it's the word of faith which we preach. Today, God's got a miracle for you. I want you to begin to just say to yourself, speak it out loud, what you're believing God to do. Come on, just speak it. Speak it boldly. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Just speak it out loud. That's what God's going to do in the name of Jesus. I want you to lay your hand right here on your chest. And I want you to pray with me out loud this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of every sin. Anything that would hinder my prayers from being answered, remove it now. Take it out of my life. 
In Jesus' name. Father God, cleanse my mind. Cleanse my body. Cleanse my hands. Cleanse the words that I say. In Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus. You've cleansed me. I'm a child of God. God has deposited inside of me the faith of God. The faith God's put in me is a pure faith. A faith for miracles. A faith where nothing's impossible. I'm armed and loaded. The Holy Ghost is inside of me. The Word is on my tongue for miracles today. In Jesus' name. If you're believing God for a miracle in your family, hold your hand up now. Father, in Jesus' name, I break every demon, every devil, every power, every principality. I come against spirits of darkness that have bound your family, your sons, your daughters. I break it in the name of Jesus. You spirit of hell, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Be gone for the glory of God. Have you ever wanted to know how much faith you need? Or how much faith does God require from you? Dr. Rogers' new teaching, How Much Faith Do You Need on CD, is available now. Call 1-888-613-6080 and ask for the CD teaching, How Much Faith Do You Need? Order number HMF15. Or visit bobrogersministries.org for ordering information. Hopefully deceive the masses with his counterfeit doctrine. Join us this week for an in-depth look into the world of prophecy through the Bible on the Revelation Coast, right here on this station.